There are many ways to describe the late international icon Nelson Mandela, but those who actually spent time with him while in exile and worked in his government realize he was a true leader whose ideals are still in play today. One such who still remembers it fondly is Dr. Siva Pillay. His time with the former president in exile changed his outlook on leadership, teaching him principles such as selflessness, humility, and forward thinking. Pillay, a medical doctor who also served as a mayor of Utenage and the whip of the State Enterprises Committee in Parliament. And now we are celebrating Nelson Mandela's life again. And Lerato Fekisi sat down with Dr. Pillay looking back at his time under Nelson Mandela's wing. Today we are celebrating Nelson Mandela Day and you cannot speak about this great iconic leader without mentioning one of the ideals that he stood for, which is selfless leadership, a man who prioritized the needs of others before his own. And our guest this afternoon is a man who pays true testament to that. Dr. Silver Pillay was the first mayor in Utenek, not only that, during this pandemic he has volunteered and is volunteering his time to help out those who are in dire straits, those who are suffering and those who are hopeless and have lost hope during this pandemic. And he joins us afternoon. Talk to us about his time with the former President Nelson Mandela and some of the principles and ideals he has learned from him and how he's playing those forward night right now as a doctor. Dr. Pillay, you had the, the privilege of spending time with the former President Nelson Mandela. What are some of the principles and ideals that you learned from him through your interaction? And how have you carried those forward right now in the medical profession? As you said, Lerato, the issue of selfless leadership is a unique characteristic and very few people have it because to look beyond yourself and your, your circumstances to the needs of the community, that was something that was imbibed in him. His deep love for the people and the desire to improve the lives of the people was something that he lived for and it's something that he wanted all of us to do. And I think that is what inspired us, his vision of reconciliation and his vision to look beyond what is now and the present and the crisis to look at a future for South Africa in which all of us could live in peace and happiness with reconciliation is a vision that I think that he brought to South Africa. Dr. Pillay, we cannot speak about you and not speak about that iconic moment of former President Mandela holding the freedom of the, of, of the city and what a historical moment that was for you as the mayor at that time. Take us back to that moment, how that was for you to have him on the same podium as you to celebrate the success you had achieved for the city and perhaps those you worked with as well. How was that time for you as a leader at that time? What people may not know was that prior to the Local Government Transition Act, we had a one city forum and Port Elizabeth became a one city even before <coughs> the Local Government Transition Act. And it was surprising that after the act was passed, Utenek was a totally divided town in which we had the right wing on one side who were prepared to close everything and you had the extreme left on the other side who felt that they were marginalized and they had nothing more to lose. So you had a warring faction which did not care about reconciliation. They were worried about revenge. And in that situation, uh, I was brought into the leadership to try to bring reconciliation between these two groups. And a major employer like VW for them to prosper and to continue and to make things happen uh, in which Utene can be a model city for the future. And I had to leave my job as a doctor to, to, to become the mayor, and, uh, and I was thrust into this. And one of the things we said to Madiba is that if we pull this off and we do it, and he must accept freedom of the city, and he said, I will be. And we were the first one to give him the freedom of the city, and that's why he accepted it for Utene, because it became the embodiment of what reconciliation could be. And it was surprising because after the visit of Mandela, it galvanized the old thing. VW opened their bee plant, investments poured into the place. People who were sworn enemies were sitting next to each other. And it was surprising because <clears throat> first there was opposition to give Mandela freedom of the city, then everybody was wanting to be the one who presented the freedom of city to Mandela. 
So it's an amazing feeling of a man who could bring people together. And I think uh, uh, it, it, was, it was very symbolic that we gave him the freedom of the city because we showed that we could bring about reconciliation. Dr. Pillay, back then the common enemy right there was racial segregation. Perhaps right now we are fighting an unknown and unseen enemy called COVID-19 virus and you were saying then key back then was the issue of leaders working together to fight this common enemy. What principles back then that worked to achieve that freedom do you think that can be applied right now, especially in terms of leadership, um, to fight this unknown enemy? You see, what the lessons we have learned is that what we are applying right now. At that point in time, we had a polarized society that were pulling in all different directions and were not prepared to work together for a common good, for a common purpose. Now, we reached the political freedom and people worked together for that, but we didn't get the economic freedom that was necessary. Now, if you take COVID-19 right now, it is a disease that's ravaging everybody, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are white, whether you are black or, or gray or, or whatever color. And at this point in time, the disease is having an effect that is not the same for all economic groups. But at this point in time, we have learned a big lesson that if we do not work together, all of us, to pull our resources to fight this, there is no way you can say, I can live in my cocoon and be protected. And the lesson that Mandela taught us at that time, work together for a common good, be selfless and look at a broader picture and a bigger vision. That's what we're asking people to do now. All people are coming together to play their part in fighting this pandemic such that we can have a tomorrow in which all of us can live. Remember, if somebody in Kona Bushle gets sick, you cannot say I live in Winter Park and it will not come to me because you will meet in the shopping center and it will spread to each other. So all of us need to fold our sleeves, see how we can participate and contribute. And I think Madiba taught us that and that's what we are trying to do at this point in time. There was another vision that we had, he had was that all departments must work together. That's why he had a, a portfolio called RDP, in which uh, Minister Jane Naidu was, where he said, don't work in silos in health, education, and come together for RDP and reconstruct and develop the society. We went back to silos again. At this point in time, with COVID-19, we are starting again to realize you cannot work in silos. All people need to work together to fight this pandemic. And I think that's a lesson that we learned and a principle that we are applying now. Dr. Pillay, you also spoke early on about the importance of people sacrificing their time, especially now during COVID-19, because it really must be all hands on deck. You are a medical doctor who has vast history in the medical profession, but you have taken your time out to volunteer and help out. How important is it at this time for people to really uh, epitomize and personify a selfless leadership and volunteer their time and services, even their skills, no matter how high of profession they are, to help those that are dissolute? Uh, it's a two-edged sword because once we want people, a lot of people to volunteer and do things, but at the same time we are saying to the people, you need to keep social distance, stay at home so that others can be safe. Having said that, the sacrifices being made by the medical profession, the emergency services, the ambulance services, the police and the frontline workers is just astronomical. And they have to do this while themselves having a fear of contracting the illness. So it is a huge sacrifice for them to make. But at the same time, people can re-engineer themselves towards the pandemic. If you take engineering firms, they are now building ventilators for us. You're taking alcohol firms that are making alcohol for the consumption is now making sanitizers. You're getting PPE coming in from from, from, from cottage industries and, and cooperatives. So we can all work together and see how we can contribute because this is a pandemic and all of us need to play our part. In whatever way it is possible that it needs to happen, we need to do it. 
Going forward now, Dr. Pillay, I'm sure we'll all look back and people are saying 2020 is the worst year and the worst year we've ever had. But you're saying that as a medical doctor, you've experienced um, perhaps even worse things. Um, um, Nelson Mandela also was in isolation. He was perhaps in prison as well. What keeps you going as a doctor? What is the one thing that makes you wake up uh, like whatever woke up Nelson Mandela back in the past that makes you motivated to wake up and try and serve again more than anything else? You see, you'll either be existing every day if you just wake up and continue with your routine. You've got to have a belief that tomorrow has got to be better than today. If you have that belief in your heart that we can make tomorrow better than what we have today, then it's something that will drive you always. And it's what drove Madiba and others during the time of the struggle. We could either lament about the condition we were in, or dream of a better tomorrow and work towards it. There's no point dreaming and sleeping with it. You, you have to work towards it. And we actually always have this dream that South Africa will have a better tomorrow and we'll all have to contribute to make that tomorrow better. And it can be the most beautiful place in the world uh, if we all work towards it. And you have to do that because that's the belief that we have. Lastly, Dr. Pillay, um, as we celebrate Nelson Mandela Day today and we are looking at an iconic man who was a selfless leader, what are the few things that you take back from his life that you think must never be forgotten um, as we look at the current struggles, whether economically, politically, health-wise, that we are facing, that you think perhaps are a mantra for you um, that you take back from him? It's an amazing uh, person because his ability to look beyond a current situation is just astronomical. If I can remember, just to give a small incident, at East London, uh, when the big marches were taking place, uh, the mayor of East London said, in Irisal Komni, Ratsal Komni. And then there were thousands of people outside. And we all went in, Mayor uh, Madiba, this place should not exist tomorrow, it should burn. And he came back and he came and he says, where's the mayor? And he goes to the mayor and he says, Mayor, I'm so glad you are giving me such a warm welcome to your town. And the man melted. <laughs> it's an amazing thing about him and his ability to look beyond it. And when we asked him later, but Madiba, why did you? He says, listen, we have to look beyond this. This is going to be places that we are going to meet. If it burns, do you think you can control this crowd? Do you think where is the money is going to come to fix it and build it again. This is our country and we cannot destroy anything. We have to preserve as much as it. So his ability to look at that was, was just amazing. His ability where he could inspire people. I mean, when, I, when he came here, VW as a company was really considering whether it was worth to make investments in South Africa and everything. After his visit, VW opened the beef plant, Goodyear opened in South Africa, Snellaka opened here. And it was an amazing feeling where people have a belief and then they see the man and they saw what he, what he was standing for. And it was a genuineness about him that they would believe that we can follow this person. Because he's honest, he's got integrity, and he's got the interest of the people at heart. There is no self-interest in and that's what motivated people and that's what even motivates us today because we still believe that that ideal can be reached Dr. Pele, a really selfless leader who is saying the one thing that he takes back from the former President Nelson Mandela is that above all he was able to look beyond the current more than anything else. He always prioritized the needs of people before his own and he says if we are to build this rainbow nation that we talk about, we need to have more people of his caliber, people that say at whatever take, at whatever cost, I must serve the people above my own selfless interest. But for now, let's go back to in studio. That's the Rato Fekisi there.